none of us could have expected that this meeting would take place in these dire circumstances. Can I begin by sending my best wishes to fellows and their families for their good health and safety at this time? Dyma'r chweched a nerchiad i'r gymrydoriaeth ar olaf. Rydyn ni'n ddiolchgar i chi am y braint o gael llywyddi ein Academy Genedlaethol. Bydd anrhydedd arithrol ac yn gyfnod hynod o bleseris. Ar wyth ai'r fy ysgol, oedd ymhob braint y mae dyletswydd. A i ni fel cymrodi'r, mae braint y gymrydoriaeth yn cyd fynd a gymrwymiad i gyfrannu. Rhoi rhywbeth yn ôl i'r gymdeithas ysgedig a chytuno i wasanaethu'r genedl. Oedd hwn ddiolch am benodol i lawer rwydd wedi gweithio gyda nhw i bawb a gyfrannodd yn ystod y flwyddyn ddiwethaf mewn cynnydd o'r ffyrdd ac i martyn polad a'i dîm a mae gwasanaeth rhagorol. Pellach mewn amgylchiadau herio. We've noted the list of those fellows who died this past year, and it's always invidious to mention individuals. But I do hope that colleagues will understand why I draw attention to the immeasurable contribution of my predecessor, Sir John Cadogan, and of founding fellows, Professors John Wynne Owen, Keith Robbins, Roger Owen, and John Houghton. Looking back over the decade, your society has achieved much. We have a Royal Charter. There are now over 560 fellows. We've recognized talent, promoted research and scholarship, and our voice is heard and is heeded. Our financial position is sound, thanks to our supporters and in particular to our fellows. But our financing needs still need to be put on a more sustainable basis. That's work in progress, including negotiations with the Funding Council of Wales on getting access to the so-called diamond dividend. Last week, we launched a specific campaign to encourage donations in this our 10th anniversary year, and I commend this to you. The strategic aims of a learned society are to celebrate excellence, champion research, promote scholarship, and act as an independent source of advice to governments and others. And in implementing these objectives, we hope to catalyze ambition by inspiring academics and younger learners. In all our work, we seek to represent our values of excellence, diversity, and independence. Now, there's been, as usual, much routine business since we met last year. Activities have continued across Wales. We've arranged lectures, supported events, awarded medals, and offered informed opinion to governments and legislatures. We're working constructively with other academies. We formed a Celtic Academies Alliance to consider issues of common interest. Now I'd now like to highlight five particular areas of work during this past year. Your society made useful contributions to the development of the Welsh Government's international strategy. An important element of this strategy is the way in which Wales influences developments outside Wales to the benefit of the nation, particularly how it influences and is taken account of in London. We therefore planned a series of Wales and the world events. The first explored perspectives on soft power in a successful symposium held at Cardiff Metropolitan University and kicked off by Joe Nye of Harvard, the father of the concept. A subsequent session in the National Museum focused on the role of arts and culture with many examples ranging from opera to pop music, literature and theatre. Universities in Wales have always been international. So the role of higher education was an obvious candidate for consideration in Bangor in February. We had planned to bring all this work together 
in an event in Aberystwyth University in April. And our ambition had been practical. What instruments are available? How, when, where should they be better deployed? What additional resources might be needed? And how could loose coordination make the overall effort more effective? In my view, it's not enough to critique policy. We have an obligation to make constructive proposals, and we have the talent to do so. Our intention now is to hold this wrap-up session as soon as possible, and it will be an important contribution to a post-COVID, post-Brexit world. Now, one of John Minowin's last contributions to the society was to brief me before I met the First Minister in December to press the merits of a One Health approach. John always argued persuasively the merits of exploiting the synergies of human, animal and plant health and setting health policy in a social, environmental and international context. And how right he was. Our work continues. We'll soon publish a pamphlet setting out the merits of a coordinated policy. And later this year, your society will bring together the substantial expertise which exists in Wales. The challenges of the health service budget, of adequate social care, and tackling all the social deprivations that exist in Wales, they underline the crucial importance of this area. It's also a subject where Wales can be an exemplar internationally. Now, Wales studies are an important yet underappreciated field of study. As one of our distinguished fellows, Professor Wynne Thomas would argue, we better understand ourselves if we understand the context of Wales, what it means to us and where we come from. Much work and research takes place under the rubric of Wales studies. It's national and it's international at the same time and covers a myriad of subjects. David Broucher has done much to bring practitioners and organizations together. In January, we published our first national snapshot of Wales studies research. And the concept is now recognized in the new school curriculum in the cross-curricular Kenevian approach. Mae'r Gymdeithas Ysgedig yn wahanol i Academiau Cenedlaethol eraill yn y Deirna Sinedig, yn ein hamrwyniad i weithredu'n ddwyieithol. Ond mae dwyieithrwydd yn golygu cymaint mwy na cyd ymtyrddio a reoliadau am ddefnydd llafar ac ysgrifenedig o'r iaith, Mae dwi eithrwydd ac yn benodol am, aml eithrwydd yn cyfoethogi'r unigolion a'r unigolyn a chymdeithas. Roedd ni wedi cynllunio symposium i chelgeisio i archwilio gweddau neberus dwi eithrwydd gydym cymdeithasol, diwylliannol, economaidd a ddysgol a mwy. I know that the government on Gwaith, you are the ski, a scogi, a chenharchi, cascliadai, bidiol, a amaveral. Be then Lenoriath in even at the Isle Drebnir, the Wigiad Hun, a gunsinuid Morda, gun Mererid Hopwood, Claire Gorara, ac Enchi Thomas. Now, I've spoken previously of the role of the fellowship and the society as a source of inspiration to encourage not only researchers and academics, but importantly, to encourage younger learners. They face particular challenges, and I would like to see more direct support for them and for their teachers. We contributed to the development of a new school curriculum. Work continues to identify how we can match what schools and learners would find helpful with what the society and fellows can provide. We are making progress on the 
New Welsh Young Scientist Initiative. And last week, COVID gave us a constructive opportunity to launch the Lockdown Learner Challenge, a competition for year 11 and year 13 learners across Wales to help motivate their learning at this difficult time. I want to turn now to three significant future challenges. Universities have been facing turbulence these many years. Problems are now hugely exacerbated, first by Brexit and now by the consequences of the coronavirus. Brexit means the end of European financial assistance for our universities. We have to recall that structural fund assistance for our universities was very influential in Wales. As those funds came on stream, we saw an improvement in research output across Wales. Today, future government support for research, including QR, is problematic. We seem destined to be excluded from Horizon Europe and indeed Erasmus. What is to replace these programmes? We're pressing for at least a maintenance of current levels of expenditure. Crucially, Wales must have a fair crack at access to available UK funding. Similarly, it's vital that Wales gets a need-based share of the proposed UK Prosperity Fund, which is due to replace EU support. COVID has devastated the work of universities as elsewhere. The traditional model is under huge threat. We can expect the number of international students to dwindle with a consequent loss of their important financial contribution. UK students are naturally keeping their options open. Some will defer entry until some normality returns. The most vulnerable universities are likely to be those whose income is most dependent on fee revenue. In all ways, the financial pressure on our universities will be acute. The Learner Society, operating as it does, distinct from individual institutions, must give every support to the sector. Universities have a vital role in local communities, in developing skills, in contributing to the economy, in their research output across a range of subjects, including blue sky subjects, and in attracting international interest and investment in Wales. I was glad to see at lunchtime that Kirsty Williams, the minister, gave very strong endorsement of the importance of universities to the future of Wales. But for its part, the sector would do well to sharpen up its contributions if Welsh universities are to secure the necessary assistance, particularly from government, as they go through the crisis and as they emerge to the new normal. The strapline of your society is celebrating scholarship and serving the nation. And we've been offering expert advice in many areas. I'm proud to say that that advice is more and more sought and appreciated. It's wide ranging and the need for it more and more apparent. COVID-19 demonstrates daily the need for advice which is informed by evidence-based research. And that's from both scientists and social scientists. I just hope that politicians are not now setting up the scientists to be the fall guys for the failures which are only too apparent. But here in Wales, our fellows have, for example, been part of the advice of the Welsh Government on the handling of Brexit and on issues which may arise as the coronavirus lockdown is eased. The Learner Society has a distinct contribution to make to national life and to the opportunities and challenges facing Wales. We'll do that more effectively the more we mobilize the expertise of the fellowship, our strongest asset. I hanker after the practice in the Royal Society of Edinburgh, where on key issues, 
they're able to draw together relevant experts and that then there are really excellent dedicated reports produced by the group. Our fellowship is now sufficiently large to permit us to do more of that and to build on arrangements which have worked in the past for devolution, education and health. As I conclude this, my valedictory presidential address, I want to thank you again for the privilege of serving. I'm especially grateful to those with whom I worked inside and outside the society, to the fellows, to those who have served as officers on the council and on other committees, and who in so many ways contribute to the successful activities of the society. It goes without saying, but must be repeated, that little of our work would have been possible without our excellent staff. Um, Leser Naur, you trusluidor a wenai ir athro hawel tomos, sin academid o bri, agesiois en aelod o'r cyngor. The nominiadau gorau iddo, ac i'r gymdeithas, am lwyddiannau parhais a chynyddol. I leave office convinced of the essential relevance of the learned society, confident of its sustainable basis, convinced of our strategic goals, and assured of its potential to deliver more for our nation. Reading Gadail and Haderis, Ubernathes, Han Vodol, Gandrethas Skedig, I Sylvain Canaliadu, and Thaun. Argohoidiad yn hylch a'i nodau strategol ac yn gwbl sicr o'r potensial i gyflwyni mwy dros yn cenedl. Diolch yn fawr iawn i chi gyd. Thank you very much indeed.